Hollywood. It's Flash Friday. Are you drinking again? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk book with you. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Flash Friday on the Tom Like His Show. Headlights on, guys. Turn them on. Show that you're a loyal listener. Show that you're standing shoulder to shoulder with the hungover staff of the Tom Likas show. Show that you are on our side. Show that uh, you're a real man. Let the world know by turning your headlights on on Friday. Let them know. And just to give you that added incentive, we ask, ladies, if you are listening and you see somebody with the headlights on, you help us uh, promote the program. You show your loyalty to the program by showing us your cans. Let's see your knockers, baby. Flash your rack. If you see a nice pair of cans, call me right away at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And if you've got a nice pair of cans and you'd like to have a place to show them, or you're on the freeway and you haven't seen a headlight lately, Call me and report your whereabouts at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And if you are anywhere on planet Earth listening to the program, you know our international number here is country code 1, area code 323-520-6211. That's 323-520-6211. Don't forget the country code is 1. For the United States of America... That's right. It's one. Actually, the country code is going to be changing to 0.67 very soon. Because uh, that's how many euros you get for $1. <laughs> All right. To your calls here. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes. Anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about. You can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. So call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Manny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I'm a first-time caller. I just want to put my two cents on this uh, Laker thing, all the crybabies calling up, complaining about uh, European players. They weren't complaining when uh, it got the Lakers to the championship. You know, they're playing against the best uh, defensive team in the NBA. You know, so you got to give them credit for doing, you know, as good as they're doing. You know, even though they're they're losing, you know, but when the going gets rough, everybody starts bailing out and everybody starts crying and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> Well, I, I can speak for myself. I'm not bailing out. I, I'll be watching the game on Sunday. I won't be at the game, but I'll be watching it. And I will see how this plays out. And I'll go right to the bitter end. Because oh, exactly. a miracles have happened, and you certainly don't want to not be watching when they do. Exactly. And that's where you weed out all the, the, the diehard Laker fans, the ones that are not complaining about about European players or you know players that are not playing tough enough. Yeah, there are some that ain't playing tough enough. You know, Paul Gasol, he could do better. Lamar could do better. And you, you are right. Once we get Bynum back, I think we'll be, you know, a better team. Way yeah. better team. But but uh, my opinion is that Vladimir Rodmanovich, toast. Got to go. Got to go. Yeah, he ain't a, you know, he ain't a, 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 he ain't a player that's always steadily, you know, doing good. You know, but there's a lot of players like that on the team. Um, who has played as consistently badly as Rodmanovich, in your opinion? For starters? Yeah. Well, there's only 12 players, so for starters. 
for the starters, Lamar. Lamar's Lamar's bad. He's always been bad. Uh, I thought they should have got rid of him a long Lamar time. Lamar was not always bad, though. I mean, keep in mind, Lamar Odom, when he played for the Clippers, was a fantastic player. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, you know, he also played well. a big three. And, and the Lakers, basically, they, we just got Kobe. We got nobody consistent that, that does good as far as, like, Gasol or Odom. I think Gasol has been consistently good during uh, the regular season and the uh, point of period of time that he played for the Lakers, and he played many great games in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, okay, I, I, I could agree with that, but you know, it, it, basically, Kobe can't do it all by himself, and. Uh, you know, you know, you know nobody, nobody ever says, nobody plate. ever attacks European players when they're talking about Tony Parker. Oh, exactly, exactly. Uh, Manu Ginobili, uh, although he's from Argentina, he played his basketball in Italy. Nobody, yeah, it, nobody ever says he's soft. Exactly, they're, those are hard glory players, and like I said, the, the people that are calling up and complaining are the they ain't diehard Lakers fans. They're just, you know, they're just when they're going against. They, you know, they bail out. They want to look for excuses. Well, the Lakers, are, the Lakers are looking for excuses right now, and uh, I don't know that they can explain it. <laughs> I don't know that they can. When I was sitting right down there yesterday, that first quarter, uh, it's a, it, it, that's a half hour of my life I will always remember. Always. The Lakers were like in another zone. <laughs> it was just incredible. But just as much as I'll remember that, I'll remember the disaster that was the fourth quarter last night. Wow. If you've ever watched the air come out of a balloon, that's kind of like what Staples Center felt like last night. It was truly amazing. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's Gilbert. Hello. Hello. Yes. What's up, Tom? Not much, Gilbert. Um, I was right here on the in Valencia. Um, Magic Mountain Parkway and the old road. And, um, I was stopped and, um, a uh, black mustang with some chicks on it just, um, showed me her cans. Really? What'd she look like? She was hot. Very hot. Really? Nice, yeah. What color hair? She was a blonde. She was a blonde? How old yeah. was she? She, um, she's like in her 25, 20s. Ooh. And what'd that cup Real size nice. look like to you? Real nice. Like about a D cup. Around there. Very really? nice. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, hey, I just want to tell you thanks. Um, I'm going to have my lights on every Friday now. I, I think that's fantastic. Now, if you're listening to Power 106 in the afternoon, would you be getting bare breasts out on Magic Mountain uh -uh. Parkway? Uh-uh. No. Uh, I'm going to work right now, too, to top it off, you know? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, me, too. You just made my day, man. Sounds good to me, Gilbert. All right, thanks. Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Dalton is listening to the online stream in Chicago on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you? Do you care? I absolutely do. I'm doing great. Fantastic. First, wanted to know, I know you're a huge hockey fan. want to know how you felt about the Red Wings winning. Well, uh, they certainly have a tradition of great management there. Yeah. Kind of uh, amazing how they've done it, and you have to give them credit yeah. uh, for being so consistently great. Uh, just as they've been so consistently great, how do you feel about the Chicago Blackhawks being so consistently awful since the late well, 1960s? i tell you what, I'm not from Chicago, so I, I don't have to root for the Blackhawks. No, 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 I understand that. But when I was coming up and I was a younger man, I was a big Blackhawks fan, but they just they had their time in the sun and... That's it. Yeah, and that was uh, before that was before the NHL that expanded that to owner. twelve teams in nineteen sixty seven. Yeah, they're both fantastic, but you know, I'm a I'm a Wings fan. Yeah, um, uh, the Wings. Uh, by the way, not only do the Wings have a great tradition, uh, the Joe Louis Arena, as as run down and tired as it's becoming, uh, what a great atmosphere to watch a hockey game. Yeah, you're not kidding. Fans know hockey. Yeah, but what I called about though was I uh, just. Second time calling, I've been listening for about a year and a half, I'd say, since being 07. And I didn't get a chance to catch it this week, but I did see the archives on iTunes, and I think it was the one you did yesterday about, do you have a game plan in life? Right. And I just got done listening to it, and I just kind of want a little background about me. I'm about ready to turn 26 in two weeks. I've got honors degree from, you know, graduate honors from a top Midwest university, fantastic degree. But, so I've done the college thing, you know, no girlfriend, no kids, none of that. But... 
I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, Tom. Like, I keep jumping from job to job, and, you know, I'm not happy doing anything. I've got a IT and economics degree. But I'm just, I can't find what I want to do, and I'm just, I want to find something, you know, dedicated, go, you know, go balls to the wall. Well, you know what I recommend to everybody? Because none of us do it. And uh, I think we need to do it. It's something I have done, and it worked for me, and it's something you need to do. Okay. You need to buy yourself a yellow legal pad and a pen uh -huh. and uh, transport yourself out of town. And it doesn't have to be someplace nice. In fact, I'd recommend you pick some suburban location with a cheap motel and check yourself in. Or maybe in a nice, quiet location somewhere, uh, way out in the country somewhere. Okay. Check yourself in for the weekend. And, and your goal is no TV, no radio. Your goal is to sit down and, and, and say to yourself, who am I? What do I love? What am I passionate about? Could you say that one more time? I phone cut out a second. Well, yeah. Who am I? What do I love? What am I passionate about? Write those things down. Some of them you can't make into careers. Right. You know, I love Vienna beef hot dogs. Well, <laughs> right. It was somebody already thought of that, and uh, that's really just something you can eat. But the thing is, write down everything in life that you love. Write down the things in life that you're passionate about. And as you start making these lists, you will start seeing career opportunities. It's all in the way you think. The problem with most people is that they don't give this any deep thought. Uh, they look at what their friends are doing, or they ask their parents, or something like that. Right. You need to figure out who you are. That's one of the hardest things to do in life. You know, I've been in therapy for eight years. Right, I, and I do a lot of that work myself, you know, whether it's on the couch with a, with a therapist, or, you know, I'm a pretty deep thinker myself, so I'm not afraid to, to go to those places and... It'll get down and dirty, but it's well, just, I haven't, I've been doing that for five years, and I haven't come up with... No, 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 but you need to shut out all the other influences, shut out all the noise, and sit and write for a weekend. Do it like a homework assignment. Just all weekend. All weekend. Do not come back until you've got long lists. Okay. That's the hard work of becoming who you're going to become. And I, right, I did this, and it worked for me. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause I just, I mean, I'm, I'm motivated as hell. But you know what? It's if, if you just, you don't know, love, you, you, you get bored, and you know, you want to, you know, you just want to go home and sleep. You know, but that's not me. So. All right. Well, give it a shot, and let me know how it uh, turns out for you. And I wish you all the luck in the world. Tom Likas. Come on. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Just a message to all the chicks right now. Excuse me, chicks. This is Scott calling on the 405 freeway. I'm about to get on the 405 south coming from the 101. Please stick your boobs out the window because I like to see them. Thank you very much. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's our telephone number. Look at these phones. Sean on the Tom Likas Show, hello. That was a great call. First call of the segment? Typical. Let's say hi to Travis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? It's going great, Travis. Yeah, I just want to talk about those fans that keep saying stuff about the Lakers. You know, I'm not a Laker. You know, I'm a Laker hater myself. The reason is because of Kobe Bryant and, uh, you know, all the stuff they did with Shaq. And they're trying to put up with Kobe Bryant right now and try to force him to go out there and be an all-star. But I think he's, he's just a... Uh, you know, they're all starstruck right now because not a lot of them is a Hollywood-type dudes. You know what I mean? It's like... Sylvester Stallone showing up, and they're all starstruck. And and like, look at Paul Gasol. You know he's from Memphis, where nobody really. No, no, he's he's not from Memphis. He's from Barso Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know the Grizzlies. That's his last team he played for. So 
you know, they're not really up to that that type of uh, factor in the game. Right oh, wait a minute, now. The, the 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 Lakers won three championships in a row, and a lot of the same people. In fact. Uh, we were talking about this last night. Uh, the Staples Center, uh, when the Lakers are playing, is frozen in the era of between like 1976 and 1990. In right, terms right. of the music and the videos, I'm hearing Tusk by Fleetwood Mac, and I'm hearing I Love L.A. by Randy Newman. and <laughs> all the, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, uh, this is not current music, and it has very little to do with basketball, but uh, nonetheless... Yeah. Uh, for three seasons, uh, 99, 2000, 2000, 2001, 2001, 2002, Lakers won three championships in a row. Yeah. And a lot of the same people were there. And then back in 1988, when the Lakers won the championship with Kareem and James Worthy and, and, and Magic, a lot of the same people were still, I think Sylvester Stallone was there at the 88 finals. Right, right. Well, it's just that because... The back then, you know, they had Shaq, who was in the Starstruck. They had Rick Fox, who was in the Starstruck. You know, or, or, so they're already in that type of game. Like you got Lamar Odom, who's his first time in the finals, and same with Paul Gasol. You know, uh, you know what I mean, Tom? So it's just like a bunch of bunch of stuff going through their head. And then right why now. did they stink in Boston? I, in Boston, it's. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get at, Tom. Like it's a different atmosphere. You know, and in Boston, Vinny and Guido were there. Right, <laughs> exactly. But it's a different type of atmosphere. You got, like, crowds in Boston that's really going for their team. Like, last night, like, nobody, you know, they were cheering during the first quarter and stuff in the second quarter. But once their team started losing, like, nobody was trying to get up off their seats and clap. Were you at the, were you at the game, Travis? No, I was hearing it, though. Let me, let me, yeah, but let me tell you something about that. Uh, and I wondered about that, too, when I watch on TV. On TV, they tone down the sound of the crowd so you can hear the announcers. Um, the people were chanting defense and they were, uh, they were screaming, uh, they were. Uh, and let's go Lakers. But I can tell you, and we're in the audio business, we're in the broadcasting business ourselves, uh, you lose a lot of that when you watch TV. Oh, right on, right on. Be because like you have to, you have to hear the incessant ramblings of Jeff Van Gundy. And, yeah. uh, you wouldn't want that drowned out by the crowd. Yeah. I feel you, Tom. All right, that's all I just wanted to say. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. But by the way, that's another thing. Can't they just do it with two people? Couldn't you just do it with um, uh, Mike Tirico and uh, Mark Jackson? And uh, do they really need Jeff Van Gundy? Do, do they need to have everybody who was ever employed by the New York Knickerbockers? Seriously, is that necessary? When these uh, East Coast networks come in here and uh, cover events. Nothing better than watching Mario. Here we are out here in California. Yes. Makes me sick. We're in Hollywood. No. no, you're not in Hollywood. This is downtown Los Angeles, you moron. Go back in the turnip truck to New York or wherever you came from, okay? And you Bostonians, get back in the beer truck and head back home, will you? No woman is ever going to have sex with you here in Southern California. Uh, that's a given. <laughs> Tell you right now. Hey, uh, you got a nice set of cans. What do you say? Come back to my hotel room. I'm staying at the Holiday Inn. That's what the Bostonians are like. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Sonny. On the top, like your show. Hello. Um, I just, you know, not to uh, uh, change change the subject from basketball, but I got to ask you about fat girls. Yes. Right. Um, I'm I'm actually from uh, uh, London, but uh, I actually went well, went down to Pine Street in a place called Yard House. I don't know if you've been there or not. Oh yeah, in Long Beach. Yes. Yeah, Long Beach. So I went down to Pine Street, and uh, there, there was a there, well a group of fat girls, and well, one of them came up to me, and I, I guess she kind of liked me, and. And then she was like, asking me to buy her drinks and stuff. And I, and I, I just looked at me. She, she was probably like five foot tall. She's probably about five foot wide as well. And, I think we have uh, a picture so, of her on our MySpace, by the way. <laughs> I should be. No, but I, 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 I actually took her to the bar and, um, and I, and I, and I actually asked the bartender for a, uh, protein shake for her. And the bartender <laughs> said, no, we, we don't do protein shakes. And uh, the uh, girl, girl looked at me and got really, really upset with me. I'm just kind of, <laughs> 
But what I, what I can't figure out, because because in Europe, we we got we got fat girls in Europe as well. Well, and but, you know, certainly in London. I mean, uh, well, yeah, London, what a yeah. what a tragedy! You 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 leave London, come to L.A. You're in Long Beach. You're hoping to see hot chicks, and then you got fat chicks in Long Beach. I, I got fat, and, but I'm I'm just wondering, you know, at least in London, the uh, you know uh, you know fat girls know know where, where they stand. But I'm I'm wondering what what's the difference? What what what, what actually makes the L.A. fat girls? You know, have 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 all this attitude. Well, it's not just L.A. fat girls; it's American fat girls. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, yes, because uh, uh, it's years of these TV talk shows like Oprah Winfrey uh, telling women, "Oh, they're they're just great. It doesn't matter if they're fat. They're fat but fit." They use terms like that. You go, girl. It doesn't matter if you're 180 pounds. Um, we even have stores to sell designer fashions to fat women in this country. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. Of course it's crazy. I mean, if, if women couldn't get designer clothing, they would have an incentive to lose weight. I Ooh. mean, by by indulging them, by giving them size triple X frocks, well, uh, yeah, now they have no incentive to lose weight. Well, let's see. This is it. This is why, I, I, you know, I was just trying to be be helpful to her. So I ordered a protein shake, and she just got really upset with me. I, I don't understand. Well, I, <laughs> I help her out. well, for first of all, don't be going to Long Beach looking for hot chicks. Okay, uh, you want to be sticking to the other beach cities like uh, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, Manhattan Beach. Okay, those yeah. are the pl those are the places you want to go. Uh, you actually recommend a good place. Well, I mean, literally all you have to do, well, first of all, don't try driving and drinking on Pacific Coast Highway uh, in the South Bay uh, that you're guaranteed to get caught and arrested. It's bad. Uh, but if you, I don't know, are you staying in a hotel? Yeah, I'm staying in a, hot, a hotel, yeah, down in uh, uh, Palos Verdes, actually. Palos Verdes? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually staying there. Nice area, no action. No, no, no action at all. No, I mean it's dead as a doornail because it's really uh, like it's almost like a suburban community is what what Palos Verdes is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So um, you want to head north on the Pacific Coast Highway? Uh, the, the closest place to you is Redondo Beach. It is, yeah, yeah. And there's a Redondo Beach Pier, and there's all kinds of bars along Pacific Coast Highway, and really they're pretty easy to pick out. Because unlike London, and we just spent about 15, 16 days in London back in October and September, um, unlike London, uh, here uh, in Southern California, sports bars are pickup joints. All right, okay. What? You don't go with the boys to play darts down to the sports bar. You get down to the sports bar, and the sports are on with the sound turned down and pussycat dolls music uh, playing very loudly and chicks in there looking for guys. Gotcha. There's one place called Mr. Pockets there along Pacific Coast Highway in, uh, right. I think it's Hermosa Beach uh, or El Segundo. The, right. All these cities are next to each other on Pacific Coast Highway. Oh, well, fantastic. Appreciate the, uh, the tip. Tom. If you talk if you talk to your, if you have a concierge at your hotel and talk to him about uh, getting to PCH and, and getting to some bars, I'm sure he can uh, direct you to a cab and you want to take one. Do not drive there and drink. Don't do it. As long as there's no, like, fat chicks, bro. That's, that's the only thing. Well, I put it this way. The fat chicks are outnumbered by hot chicks because the Hermosa Beach Pier, the Redondo Beach Pier, all these places, they're, they're teeming with hot chicks in uh, skimpy dress as we get to the warm. By the way, this weekend is going to be hot weather in Southern California, so they're going to be wearing the least ever. Oh. Another good place is to just zip on down to Orange County to Huntington Beach. Because oh, the right. chicks are even hot, the chicks are even hotter there. Really? Oh yeah. Well, how and, far is that from from uh, from PV then? Uh, probably about twenty miles. Is it? Oh, that's, that's not too bad. It's doable. That's not too bad. All right, cool. All right, I appreciate the tip, man. Let me know how you make hey. out. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I, 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 flew, I flew down last uh, well, weekend. <laughs> uh, well, I flew down last weekend. As soon as, soon as I went to the hotel, uh, a friend of mine picked me up, and he said, "Oh, you know, Long Beach, Pine Street." It's, no. It's, no, you know, it no. Was the best place in SoCal. So we went. I, I wasn't too impressed, except for an Irish pub. Yeah, uh, w w which was great because I, you know, I actually got my Guinness and my Stellas, which was nice. But you don't get any um, chicks. No, there's no chicks. Come, there's come no on, you know what kind of chicks hang out at Irish and English pubs? Okay, fat oh, yeah, chicks okay. who like to play darts. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've been. I've been to the real thing, and I know. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, Huntington Beach or or Hermosa it is then. Absolutely. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Tom. Sonny, good luck. Thanks for the call. <laughs>
Tom Likens. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you're just trying to get laid, being a nice guy in any way, that reputation will kill you. It will kill you. Yeah, dig that, dig that. It's the Tom Likens Show. Friday from Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. And if you're listening anyway on the better radio in any country on planet Earth, the country code is 1, the area code 323, and the number is 520-6211, one 6211 Let's continue here with, um, wow, Diego on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for having me. Sure. Uh, first time caller. Anxious. But you know what? I want to just say that I'm really upset about the things you guys are talking about, Lamar Odom, or at least some of the callers. So I think it's way unfair. He's a very good player. Um, he's been with us through thick and thin. You know? Uh, through thick and thin? Yeah, well, you know, through the last two eight, two two years that he's been with us, last year, I guess you could say, you know, um, he's a big part of the team, you know, of course, and of course you got to expect, you know, Boston being such a defensive team, you know, like they're going to stop him no matter what. Same thing that they're doing to Gasol, but, you know, you have to think he's seven something, you know, and he's still kind of. Uh, being outplayed by by Garnett. Do you think that uh, uh, Shaquille O'Neal at seven something in his prime would have been stopped by the Boston Celtics? No, not at all. That's right. Because he's, so, he's so much bigger too. Like this guy's heavy. You know, you know, you gotta give Shaq, you know, his size. You know, he's a big, he's fat. You well, know? guess what? The Lakers had the same opportunity to get big players. And that okay. is true. You're, you're right. In so the if they didn't choose to get big players, maybe they can never be the champions. Um, well, that's true, too, because obviously Boston is bigger, fit more physical. You know, I, I hear this in hockey all the time about the Los Angeles Kings, and it really annoys me. They say things like, well, the other team was so much bigger than we are. Well, whose fault is that? I don't think anybody watches hockey, man, especially in LA. But, but, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm I, yeah, I, blaming, I like blaming it on the other team being bigger and stronger. Yeah, well, who, whose feel, fault is that? If that's what the problem is, the then we've got the wrong players. The big problem, I think, was the bench, of course. The bench was the thing that killed us. I mean, of course, you know, Boston has great bench players. But you look at our bench. I mean, Sasha Sasha was big last game, but now, I mean, he was... Sasha hardly played last night. Well, I, that's true. I will give you that. He played, what, 23 minutes. So the guy came off the biggest game of his career on Tuesday, and last night he hardly played at all. Instead, we saw that stiff Vladimir Rodmanovich. That I understand, Rodmanovich. You think that I, might have had something to do with it? No, well, Rodmanovich. I don't know what's wrong with him, and uh, you know what's wrong with him. What's ever been right with him? The guy was a stiff with the Clippers. Yeah. Then, right. for the brief time he played for the Seattle SuperSonics, he was a stiff in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And now he's a stiff here. I mean, wh yeah. when was he? When was Vladimir Rodmanovich ever a great player? To be honest, don't you know? I mean, I like some of the games he played, but then at the same time, I couldn't. I couldn't even tell you. When, you know, he doesn't play as well consistently. I couldn't even tell you when was the day I really liked him playing. Well, that's not good. That's by the way, that's not good enough. You're right, especially for LA championship Laker team. We can't. We couldn't. You know, and it's our bench that kind of failed us. I mean, even Ronnie Turioff, like you were saying, he's the backup center. This guy is being outhandled out. Length, you know, he's, you know, he, he put, he put, every time he gets in the, in the last playoff, he's been getting at least two but personal He's fouls. the backup and center because Andrew Bynum is supposed to be the center and Pau Gasol is supposed to be the, the backup center. Exactly. And then I imagine Roni Turioff would be there in case of an emergency, somebody fouls out of the game or That's something true. like that. Uh, but he's not supposed to be your backup center. He's not a center by trade, nor is yeah. Pau Gasol. Yep, and you understand, it. and uh, you know I do agree with Paul Gasol. I mean, like I said, he's being outplayed by Kevin Garnett. He's like it's unbelievable, you know. I mean, it, it, you but you know, you got to give Boston the credit. You know, they're they're hard. I mean, they wanted it more. Period. You know, you can see it even after you know getting having Kendrick Perkins just you know 
you know, just fall, you know, with his shoulder. Ronda, Raja, everybody was worried about Rondo. He thought he was going to get outplayed by, you know, he was, was going to outplay Derek Fisher, you know, and they weren't even playing, and they still got beat. I mean, they they lost by 30 points at the last half. I couldn't, everybody's shocked too, man, and I'm, you know, I wish I went to go out 20 shots too, you know, <laughs> to forget about it, but, you know, you can, and that's the truth. You have wow. to deal with it, I guess, you know, wait till next year. Well, so I see you've given up. Another fan who's given up. And I'm not saying that's uh, that that's unrealistic. I, I, I'll watch the games. I don't know about you. I will be watching. No matter what happens. It's the NBA Finals. You have to watch. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Happy Father's Day. Why? Thank you. Um, just want to get that in early. Um, you've done a big service to all of us out here, so big thank you to you. Now I have to ask you some financial advice, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, I got right now, I got about $40,000 in a tax-sheltered annuity. I was advised to do this when I started my career about five years ago, and I was wondering if you think this is a good idea to continue with that or if I should be moving in a different direction. Well, first of all, I'm, remember, I'm not a certified financial planner or a stockbroker or anything like that. Understand, I'm just a self-made multimillionaire. Um, do you have an IRA? Um, I do not have an IRA. <laughs> do you have a 401k? Um, no, I work in government. They don't. For, do you have a 403b? Yeah, that's a tax sheltered annuity. So it's 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 that's what you're calling a tax sheltered annuity. Yeah, that's the 403b. Yeah. Wait a minute. Do you have an annuity in your 403b? I'm confused. Uh well, first of all, do you know what an annuity is? Um, it's it's a retirement. Correct. Yeah, but well, yeah, but what? How does it work? Do you know how it works? Um, it takes out it's pre it's pre tax money you're 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 putting into it. Right, but I so don't think you're talking about an annuity. What is the money invested in? Um, actually, right now it's not invested anywhere. It's it's straight interest. That's it. Yep. Why? Um, this is kind of when I got started into this. I maybe got some bad advice from people and. I had some 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 older friends of mine had some really bad downfalls with them and lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. With who? This is where, with who? Um, right now, I believe it's with. Wait a minute. Do you actually own an annuity inside your four hundred three b? I believe that's what it is. You don't even know what you have. That's why I'm calling you, Tom. All right, son. Uh, <laughs> you need to know what you're investing in. You can't have money taken out of your paycheck and not know what you're investing in. If you not, if you can't be bothered to find out what you're investing in, just don't do it. Don't pour your money down the drain. Why would you? Why would you have money taken out of your paycheck and then somebody says, "Oh, what's your money invested in?" Oh no. You got me there, man. Well, step one, you need what? to find out what your money is invested in. Gotcha. So you need to call the human resources department at your job, and you need to say, I need somebody to sit down with me and tell me where this money is going, what it's invested in. Gotcha. Because I can't give you any advice without knowing what you have. Okay. And it sounds to me like what you're doing. You don't have an annuity from what I can tell. My guess is money is taken out of your paycheck and put into either a money market account or one of these GICs, which are guaranteed investment contracts which are not insured by the FDIC or any other government agency. And okay. uh, they pay higher interest than your average money market account. Do you know how much interest you're getting paid? Um, I believe it's six and a quarter. Yeah. Well, yeah. For GIC, yeah. that's about right. All right. That's what you have. But, son, you need to be invested in stocks. Okay. You're too young to just put your money in the equivalent of a money market account. Gotcha. So you need to find out what the investment choice is at your job. Don't they have mutual funds available? Probably. You need to familiarize yourself with what they have. Okay. I would also recommend an hour with a certified financial planner, and they can be found by doing a little Googling online. Sit okay. down and ask these questions. Where should my money be invested? Cool. But Thank but you. do not have money taken out of your paycheck and flushed down a black hole, which is what you're doing right now. You don't even know where the money's going. 
Son, you realize if you invest in stocks beginning at, uh, in your 20s, you can be a millionaire when you retire, pretty much guaranteed. Once again, that's why I'm calling you just to figure out what I'm doing wrong so you right. can set me on the right track. All right. Step one, make an appointment at your human resources department and tell the person there straight up you need to be told where that money's being invested. What is it invested in and what other investment options are there? You need to get all the literature and take it to a certified financial planner. Okay. Just take an hour of their time. Show them what you got. I mean, since you have no experience, uh, you may not even know where to look for this information. There are places on the web you could find the information about uh, mutual funds, but you don't even have enough experience to do that. I'd recommend a financial planner. Okay. Make sure the financial planner is not an insurance salesman or a stockbroker, because they will try to sell you insurance or sell you stocks. Yes, that's <laughs> I've, I've seen that before. Okay. You 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 want a, what's called a fee based certified financial planner. Cool. Okay. So I will I will get on that this weekend and start start my my uh, education for myself there. Let me know how you make out. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Richard. Got to tell you, what's Spike Lee doing at the games? He's always Sporting that New York jacket and gear, is he for the Knicks? I get well, uh, well, yeah, he's a, he's a New York Knickerbocker fan, so of course uh, the Knickerbockers will never be in the NBA Finals again. So the only way for him to see the NBA Finals is to fly to Los Angeles and walk around waiting for people to say, "Oh, look, that's Spike Lee," which Spike Lee is basically irrelevant in Los Angeles. Yeah, it's so stupid. It's like I went to a Dodger game a while back. It was a Cardinals game, and some idiot was walking around with a frisk jersey and he had a beer thrown at his head and i was like well the, the idiot deserved it <laughs> yeah i mean he's not one of these people who shows up sits in the front row and then sits there with a smug look on his face waiting for people to notice him or waiting to be shown on camera i i, I really have a problem with people like that and these people who come in from the east coast thinking we're all waiting for them at the airport to get here guess what spike lee is irrelevant and i was on the way to the laker game last night and across the street on the uh, Nokia uh, uh, theater. They had all these ads with Spike Lee's face doing some promotion for Nokia. Huh. And it's like, is this ad agency in New York or something? I mean, does anybody in L.A. care about Spike Lee? I don't. Can anybody name a Spike Lee movie? Uh, do the right thing, and that was it. That's all I know. Yeah, what, what century was that made? And then another thing, worse than New York, Boston, and I'll tell you why. There's a there's a reason for it. I, I can't stand New York, bottom of the barrel. I can't stand their, their sports fans. But at least with New York, if they pay top dollar for their team, they're pretty, you know, it's like they are who they are. The Red Sox, though, they come off like, hey, we're America's team. You know, we're like blue-collar team. Their payroll for the Red Sox is ridiculous, <laughs> and I hate that they try to come across like they like they're they're a blue collar team. That's a bunch of crap. Of course, there's very few blue collar baseball players. In Boston is even worse because they parade around like they're like, oh, we're not like New York. What happens after they win the World Series? They turn just like them. Can't stand them. Oh yeah, I. By the way, I lived in Boston, and you know how much I detest New Yorkers. But I have to agree with you. Bostonians are even worse. No, thank you, Tom. Even worse. Here in L.A. Look at the weather. Right now, it's beautiful here. We don't have to worry about the nonsense over there where the air conditioning is going out in D.C. We'll stick it here in L.A. And I love getting under their skin, too. Years as a kid, years of sitting at Yankee Stadium and, and, and taunting Bostonians. I know exactly how to get under their skin. And I just love giving it to them. They're, they're so easy to inflame. Oh, I have a cousin who, get this, I had three cousins who used to live in New York City. All three of them came out here. One particularly, one summer came. All he could talk about, I'm not kidding you, Tom, I swear this is what happened. We were like, okay, you like L.A.? He's like, well, it's okay. I miss my girlfriend in New York City. We took him to Disneyland. Ah, oh, we got Coney Island over in New York City. It's the same thing. Okay, well, what about, we took him to TJ. Oh, I miss the, the, the places in New York. Oh, we have better cars in New York. New York, New York, New York, the whole thing. Well, three months later, guess what? He picked up all his stuff, and now he lives here in L.A. <laughs> of course! That's exactly right. And by the way, the difference between Coney Island and Disneyland is you won't get murdered going to Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love it, Tom. Hey, can you take me out and in a cold fist style? Did we ever do that? We did a long time ago, but I don't think we can dig it out before the end of the hour. I'm sorry. <laughs>
The Tom Likas Show.